I can't stop from smiling, first of all. Uh, it's good to see you back. Uh, and I guess once a bear, always a bear, because as people may or may not know, because you've been gone for a bit here, this all started in 1980 when you became a bear with Walter Payton and yep. Dan Hampton and the great Alan Page. Uh, how's it feel? It's great. Uh, it's really been, uh, I, I've, I've been blessed through my whole career. Uh, actually, to play here back, you know, as brief as it was, but to be here and get the, a feel for the tradition and then uh, get to coach here with some of the players that were on the team at that time. Special memories, uh, special coaches, and then to be able to come back uh, again at this point in my career uh, with this coaching staff and the ownership, obviously, and, and Ryan Poles, it, it's, it's really special to me and to my family. 2009 to 2014 here with the Bears secondary coach and I the first thing that pops in my head because it didn't happen very often it doesn't happen very often in the NFL that 2013 season Peanut Tillman Tim Jennings starting pro bowlers for the NFC coached by John Hope that was their great memories even then yes oh absolutely and uh, you know the great thing about those two guys they pushed each other and of course Charles was a uh, he was a uh, uh, he was a force uh, to be you know he 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 pushed it and uh, Tim you know Tim wanted to be he did not want to be left behind so uh, you know they pushed each other it was pretty cool competition so you're in the family of defenses that Matt Eberflus is yes so it's a natural connection but it goes deeper in that because you were born and raised in Kettering Ohio went yep. to Ball State you're a mad guy he was Toledo obviously played at Toledo yep. but you guys also both coached at Missouri. There's connections to Gary Pinkle. I mean, is that the relationship quotient to this whole thing, or does it go deeper than That's that? part of it, uh, for sure. Uh, you know, him being in the same system, him working with Rod. Uh, my uh, brother Marinelli, my yeah. brother coached him uh, at Toledo for one year. Brady. Yep. Oh, wow, now that's interesting. Yes, so uh, we have deep connections, and then obviously through Coach Marinelli and just the systems and uh, belief system and how you play defense and how it, what it takes, the standard, what it needs to be, uh, to be great. And uh, we've all gone, from, uh, him and I have learned it the same way, and so we have a lot of similar beliefs for sure. So it happened quickly, boom, cornerback coach, passing game coordinator. It's a, a kind of a phase uh, in this era of football to have on both sides. You know, you could have an offensive coordinator, but you could also have a run game coordinator. Yes. Yep. Uh, how, how does that look for the Bears in 2023? Well, right now I'm just kind of learning and, and, and getting to know who the players are, watching them on video. Uh, we're going through cut-ups right now. Uh, the defensive staff, Coach Williams and those guys, they do a great job of taking me through it, explaining what they're trying to get done, how we want to uh, technique this certain coverage or that. So uh, I'm excited about it, and it's been a good experience so far. So what you've already watched on tape, the, there's a four-pack of guys right now that really get everybody's attention, and that it includes Kyler Gordon, mm -hmm. Jaquan Brisker, Eddie Jackson, and Jalen Johnson, these four players. Uh, what have you seen on tape that sticks out to you? And three of the five leading tacklers for this team last season were defensive backs. Yeah, well, a little bit of that, too, is uh, the evolution of offenses. Um, the more perimeter stuff, ball gets on the edge sometimes quicker. Uh, but they all have good skill sets. They all have uh, unique skill sets. Uh, Eddie, you can tell he's a veteran player. So understand the games have slowed down for him. Uh, from what I remember when he first came into the league, Jalen, you can see his growth process through this. Kyler, it was fun to watch him just because I did him in Atlanta last year coming out uh, for the draft. And uh, he's exceeded, uh, you know, for, for him to play outside and inside as a rookie. That's, that's a difficult task, and uh, you know, you saw him grow every game. And so, you know, I think it's, uh, it's pretty encouraging. And then with uh, Brisker, I did him also coming out, and I knew he was physical, all that. And then we happened to play uh, the Bears uh, in Atlanta. I had no idea how long he was, how big he was, and uh, he is a presence on the field, and he's got a, a bright future ahead of him as well. Yeah, you know, the combination of those guys and just the, the Gordon uh, – aspect of it to go to that nickel spot as a rookie. We didn't play it that much at University of Washington. Right. Uh, we both know that's one of the more challenging positions on either side of the ball in this league. So yes. many responsibilities and you got to be a willing tackler, which he was. Yep. But then to kick outside and it kind of just kind of 
took a deep breath and, hey, you know what? I'm around the ball a lot more. So the ball hawking aspect of it, that's, that's what this organization wants. That's what this franchise wants. That's yes. what uh, Ederflus wants. Uh, just to hit the ground floor running like that, how much progress do you anticipate from these two young guys? Oh, they'll grow. You know, the, the biggest growth jump, uh, you know, you'd like to see and you usually do see is between their first year and their second year. You know, they're just trying to catch their breath. I mean, it's, it's getting ready for the combine. It's headed into the draft. Then you're headed into mini camp. Then you're headed into OTAs. And then you're, you know, a brief break and, and you train. And then you're headed into a training camp. And then all of a sudden it's preseason. All of a sudden it's real ball. And it, it just goes. And so this will be their first time where they're not preparing right now for a combine. They're not, you know, they got a chance to take a deep breath, uh, get their bodies back to where they need to be, get their brains back to where they need to be. And so you'll see growth because they have a chance to hit reset, refresh themselves, and then get ready to go again. Number one pick, draft assets, financial assets for free agency, and a roster that is going to look vastly different than it did a year ago. It almost feels like a, another ground floor opportunity. Foundation already laid. Are you excited about that aspect of this franchise? Oh, I am. Uh, you know, I think uh, they've done a good job. They know what the culture they want. They've set the culture. Players have bought into the culture and I just see it uh, continue to grow.